Hey guys, few of you guys have been asking, so um, this is my car. It's a 1992 uh, S13, and it's got an SR20 DE at the moment, which means a non turboed version. Um, better engine, but yeah, non turboed. Turbo is going in soon. I'm getting a S14 SR20 debt, um, which is uh, better than the S13 debt. Um, S well, Debt means is like turboed. Um, T stands for turbo. D dual overhead cam, and E is electronic condition. I think something like that. Anyway, um, the SR20 debt S13 model comes with a T25 turbo Garrett, um, which only produces 180 horsepower, whereas the S14 comes with a T28 and produces 250 horsepower. So I'm going to get um, full package S14 SR20 debt. So just bolts right up to my gearbox. Um, that includes everything, flywheel, you know, all that stuff. Um, turbo, everything to just take this one out and put a debt in. It comes with, and that's 2,200. Um, straight from Japan, I'm getting a guy that uh, imports all this stuff, and he's the cheapest I've found so far for the um, engine, and he gets warranty, and it's a really nice engine. Um, 1850 for the S13 model, or 22 for the S. 14, which comes with the yeah, T28. So, um, as you can see, uh, I mean, it's a DE, so you're not really going to be able to get a lot more horsepower out of it. But all I've done engine wise is um, just put a pot air filter and a cold air intake system on there. So, um, I got my cold air intake ducting that I've uh, got in another video. So, that runs from the front there all the way around into my cold air intake box. So, um, how the cold intake, it's just a piece of sheet metal. Uh, I've got a video on that too, so watch that for more details. And uh, it's just a metal box and uh, lined with heat shield. So it's yeah, basically just heat shield for the pod, but then I've got cold air coming in from here. And it runs all the way down under there into here. As you can see, that little opening there, that's my intake. And um, that's down there. So that's all we've done really. Um, it's got a two and a half inch. Exhaust all the way through. Um, it's got headers and uh, high flow cat, and then yeah, exhaust all the way through. Just picked up the strut brace today, front strut brace. Um, just stiffen it up a little bit. I've got HSD coilovers, fully adjustable. Um, it's got base height adjustment and uh, spring preload adjustment, and also camber tops on the fronts, so you can adjust everything. Got it at a pretty nice height at the moment. Um, probably not going to drop it anymore. I've got to remove the inner guards though because it does. Um, a scrape on hard dock. Um, the rear, as you can see, pretty tucking. It's pretty nice. I can just get my fingers under there. It's not too tight, but that's all I can get in. So, um, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, pretty clean all over. Um, I've also done uh, spoiler removal. So um, I'm also getting a new aerial because that one's broken. Inside's a bit dirty because um, it's obviously my daily car, so I've still got all my work shit in there. And uh, yeah, diesel mechanic, so I've you know, got my overalls everywhere. <laughs> um, inside pretty clean as well. Got to glue this because it keeps them coming down. Inside's fairly clean. Got your standard crack dash, which is a uh, pretty damn common on these cars so I wouldn't really be worried about it. Might change the dash later on but probably not. Um, speaker pockets need to be painted black. This came with the car. It's a pretty nice setup how they got the tweeters mounted in there. Got a new one of these because all these buttons are cracked so yeah I just picked up a new one for that for like 15 bucks. Um, I've put a stereo in and um, it's cleaned up a little bit. Um, all over it's pretty clean. And inside's pretty stock. Just got speakers in the rear. There are uh, clarions, and then I've got focals in the doors. They don't actually responses. They just response speaker covers because they didn't have focal speaker covers. Um, and yeah, it's a Pioneer deck, and there's a sub in the back. So yeah, this is a uh, manual, obviously, as you can see. Didn't tell you that, guys. I'll just pop the boot. As it's got the no spoiler on there, the boot's really light, so um, when you pop the boot, it just freaking shoots up. 
So the boot's pretty clean. Um, tried to make it as clean as possible. So I just got the sub in and I've hard mounted that in. Um, I'll show you that in a second. So I put all the plastics back in, clean all the carpets, and um, yeah, pretty good sub. I think it's Infinity. Something came in the car, but it's pretty expensive apparently, six hundred dollars. So and it kicks pretty hard, so it's pretty good. Uh, all my wiring's around the back here. It's fairly neat. Um, let me try to get some light. There we go. There's my amp. Just MTX. Not that great, but um, does the job. I do have a thousand watt mono block, but uh, this one does a trick, and it's only, I don't know, I think it's like 600 or something like that. Uh, also got a rear strap brace, and I had to cut the plastics, so I tried to do that pretty neat. Uh, can't really notice it unless you stick your head in there. And that just um, allows the strap brace and the um, preload, uh, sorry, damper adjustment for the rear coilies. Um, so yeah, got the strap brace there, and same on the other side, and then here is my... Um, Sub mount, so I just made it out of um, angle iron, and that just bolts onto there, and bolts onto the sub and keeps it all secure. That's about it, guys. So, um, yeah, you guys have been asking for a video of my car, so that's about it. And I'll show you some more vids when I get turboed. I might do some videos of the turbo conversion as well, so um, stick around and um, cheers for watching. See you later. I just remembered uh, you probably want to hear a startup, so I'll do that too. Sounds pretty good. Got really noisy injectors, I think it's sort of normal on the SRs. It's not my lifters, because um, I've checked. You just hold like a screwdriver or anything metal, and um, it'll you can diagnose where the problem's coming from. So um, if you have if you have a noise like such as this, you're not really sure where it's coming from. Stick say like a spanner or a screwdriver onto the rock cover, put it on your ear, and it'll amplify that sound. And it wasn't coming from the rock cover. If I stick on top of the injector, I can hear the exact same sound. So it's definitely in the injectors. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's normal. And um, this engine's coming out in the next couple of months anyway, so I'm not really too fussed about it. I also got a new overflow bottle, I didn't tell that, um, the other one was buggered. Got a few new parts, but um, just can't bother explaining them because it's too many to list. <laughs> Neighbours are going to hate me. camera doesn't really pick up bass so it's probably not going to sound very good but it sounds awesome especially under load and stuff <laughs> sounds good red line anyway anyway uh, that's about it guys cheers for watching and um, catch you later